It's a great day. My name is Che Brown, the happy entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue focused late night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission really is to inspire, our mission is to empower, and our mission is to provide you, the entrepreneur, with all of the resources that are necessary to execute that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And on this episode, we have the one and only Yuri Child, who's in the building. Four years ago, she was sitting in this seat, and now she's here today. What's going on, Yuri? How are you? I'm good. How are you? It's so good to be back. And um, yeah, I think it was literally exactly four years ago. And a lot has happened since. But I mean, it's so good to be here. It's so good to see you. You look great. Everything. Yeah. So I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> you look great as well. I look the same as I did four years ago. Thank you so much. I, I, I lost I lost a little hair, but otherwise I'm doing okay. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so where, are where are you broadcasting in from today? So I'm in Bali, Indonesia, in Asia. Um, and yeah, I was just telling you, I just moved here two years ago. I actually, it was on my bucket list to come here and you know, do yoga for a month and I did that for a month and I did that for another month and then did that for six more months. And then I was like, oh, you know, I kind of like it here. I'm going to stay. So I just never left and I've been here for two years now. Oh, how cool is that? And I think that that leads into the topic. I mean, folks are going to Google you. Some folks are reading your bio right now, but they're, they're seeing it. And they say, oh, Shay, tonight you're talking about entrepreneurs finding balance. And um, I don't want to sound like Debbie Downer here, but I've got to ask the question, is it possible? Before I ask, is it possible? Let me ask an easier question. What does balance even mean? And what does it even look like for entrepreneurs from your view of the world? That's a good place, I think, for us to start. Yeah. Um, you know, having been a type A, you know, overachiever back in the day, um, I resonate with all different flavors of entrepreneurship and a lot of that comes with you know being extreme on one end or the other and when i talk about balance let's actually go back to the basics which goes back to our body um and there's homeostasis that we get to find and when i think about homeostasis you know it's just really about operating from a place where we're not moving away from pain we're not you know, running away from stress or something that is fear-based. And we're really creating from a place of, yeah, perfect balance from our, you know, starting with their body. I think a lot of people run their business based on um, this paradigm of moving away from a challenge, moving away from pain, moving away from anger or different things so that they can, you know, find that motivation. And, you know, what I'm really passionate about is helping people find that vision. And I think you're passionate about that, too, based on what you're sharing. Finding that vision that really inspires them to move forward in that abundant mindset, abundant state, which is where we're supposed to be. This is where we typically find that homeostasis anyway. And so it goes back to... Um, a lot of things, you know, emotional intelligence, like learning how to regulate our, you know, nervous system, as well as really learning how to utilize our language patterns so that we are able to stay in that abundant mindset and continue to create new possibilities. Um, and, and, you know, I'm actually quite interested in seeing how much I've shifted over the last four years as well. It'd be interesting to see your last episode on this because I've become so intentional about my words, knowing the power of words. And I think it's one thing to know it. And it's a whole nother thing to like really embody and utilize that intentionality that comes with um, using the words that really align with who we want to become and the world that we want to create. Um, so yeah, I think it's a lot of those things, but at the end of the day, yes, it's really finding that homeostasis in our body, which permeates through different parts of our life, our businesses. And what I find is that as we move away from this paradigm that we have to like wear that badge of honor of being stressed out or not sleeping or, you know, anything that really takes us away from not feeling good, um, we're really shifting how we get to do business. Because at the end mm -hmm. of the day, 
a lot of entrepreneurs are so passionate about their mission and what they're building. And that's beautiful, it's powerful. And um, we see a lot of people, you know, yeah. like Steve Jobs and a lot of, you know, amazing humans, amazing visionaries that we lose too fast because of the diseases that manifest from not honoring their body, not honoring that homeostasis. I mean, we're not supposed to be running at, you know, 150 miles per hour. Um, there's a reason that we have this fear-based mechanism, which we call stress, like it's the rise in the stress hormone. And there's a reason that we're supposed to rest. And I say this because maybe for some, some people, this is like, of course, when we get to rest, we need to rest. For me, I really didn't know that back in the day. And I really only knew go and go, go faster, go harder. That was it. <laughs> and um, for me, and I know we're going to talk a little bit about this too. There was a moment in my life where I decided that's not a paradigm I want to live in, nor was that going to be sustainable. And it typically isn't. It typically manifests in some kind of like mental or even physical lack of ease. I mean, disease, when we talk about disease, it's really lack of ease in our body. And I, you know, one sign of being at balance or homeostasis is that sense of ease. So when we eliminate that ease from our body for too long, it doesn't operate at an optimal level and it can have devastating consequences, you know, um, that mm -hmm. will eventually not only impact, you know, our personal life, but also the longevity of you getting to serve, you getting to do what you love. Yeah. And as you were speaking, I'm, I'm curious, you're spot on, by the way, you're speaking to a number of folks and you know, folks are going to see that you're a performance, a high performance coach and you work with high achievers. I guess the question is, since you work with these high achievers and I haven't been one entrepreneur yet that doesn't think they're a high achiever, by the way, why do <laughs> high achievers, i.e. entrepreneurs as well, why do they struggle with finding this balance? Seems like you have a calendar, you put it on the calendar. Seems like you want to get it done. You schedule and get it done. Yet, yeah. I myself, I'm raising my hand, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm not here for a confession. So don't think Shea Brown's going to be <laughs> confessing today, but I'm putting two hands in the air saying yeah. I've got to find balance. So my, my question so the audience can be clear is, why do high achievers, people you work with, let me like, ladies and gentlemen, she works with high achievers. Why do we struggle so much with just finding that balance? Yeah, you know, um, we all i mean most of us i don't know who's watching where a lot of people i think have grown up in this very masculine energy driven world um and i'm not talking about obviously you know gender sex or whatever just masculine energy and feminine energy which is what makes up you know any any you know person any creation or whatever and i think we've been really brought up in this paradigm that masculine energy is um celebrate it and you know both are good masculine and feminine and when i think about the masculine energy that is dominating our culture nowadays it is all about building building as fast as we can and going and creating and you know moving forward with a direction which is amazing too it's really brought us to a lot of innovations a lot of you know advancements in a lot of different industries and sectors and though i think over time we forgot to honor the other part which is the feminine side the feeling side the part all of us that we all crave as humans which is you know getting touch with our emotions getting connected to who we are maybe getting connected to something bigger than us um, or even other people community um, honoring our emotions i mean these things are innate to us for a reason and I, I would like to think those are some of the feminine traits that we all carry within us. And yeah, I think when we enter into a lot of these industries, cultures, or workplaces, what's celebrated is solely masculine. I think, you know, in the last couple of years, even though, I think there's been a huge shift. I don't know if you agree, um, where we are talking about the importance of rest more. We are talking about the importance of therapy more. We are talking about the importance of, you know, these type of emotional intelligence coaching and the power of emotional intelligence or empathy and leadership and so on. So I do think that there's been shifts that's 
been happening, which is beautiful to see. And um, yeah, it's really, again, going back to that balance and finding finding all colors within us, you know, whether masculine or feminine or whatever you want to call it. We're just not supposed to be operating in just that one one spectrum and i think that's when oftentimes people start to feel disconnected when they're so in their masculine um people start to feel you know burnt out um and they wonder why and they and you know i think then that's when they start to crave that kind of heart space something more something deeper you know oh, but as you were speaking I was wondering, there's a number of folks that might be listening saying, you know what, Shay, this sounds great. This sounds amazing. I love what I'm hearing. Um, before we get into a little bit of your backstory, because that's what they might be wanting. I'm like, Shay, she sounds like she knows what you're talking about, but I didn't read her bio. In fact, I didn't get a chance to go scan online about her. Can she slow down for a moment and tell us a little about who is Yuri? Uh, what's her yes. mission, goals, and objectives so we get to know her? And if we can do that, then we're going to move on about some other cool stuff. But can you take a moment? You know what the deal is. Who are you? You're giving us some great stuff. We're all <laughs> leaning in. But yes. who are you and what's the backstory that led you to doing what you're doing now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be happy to share. So who am I? I am the founder of Your Choi Coaching. So I'm a performance coach for entrepreneurs and high achiever CEOs. And um, I work with them on creating new possibilities and really creating a life that they get to love. And in the process of it, we typically um, amplify the results and we find new possibilities and new outcomes in um, unexpected ways. And it gets to be really fun. Um, so yeah, and then you know, besides that, um, I've spoken on many stages. I think you also know Eric Swanson's. I've spoken on Habitude Warrior stages. Now, actually, since I talked to you, I've been doing um, different kinds of workshops in Indonesia. I've done it in Korea, and you know, different things. So it's been a journey. Um, wow! I'm congratulations. Also Thank you. And I've also done um, some writing. So this is my baby. It's uh, creating your own happiness. This is my soul baby. But I've also been co-authored in uh, 13 other books since I've spoken with you. So it's been a journey. And um, so, yeah, my story. So I was in the corporate world for 10 years. And, you know, I was and it was great. It was fine. Right. It was fine. Um, it wasn't it wasn't. Um, I knew deep down that it wasn't something that I was meant to do forever. And it wasn't something that really lit me up. But I also didn't know that there were any other choices. And this sounds really weird now speaking about it, but the way that I was brought up back then, like I really thought this was the formula. Like everyone goes to college, everyone works for like 40, 50 years and retire. Like I thought that was the only way to define success. And then, um, you know, in 2017, my dad passed away from cancer and he, um, you know, suffered for two and a half years. And after he passed away, I had that moment, you know, you talk about the January 1st moment, like what, what, you know, that like moment of like awakening almost like, what am I doing with my life? Like, am I actually happy? I'm going to die one day too. What am I passionate about? So during that time, um, you know, I've always been passionate about positive psychology. I've actually had like a positive psychology you know, blog for a while. And this is something that I've been passionate about. I have a degree, one of my degrees is in psychology and so on. And though, um, when I really looked at both my parents, I, they were first generation immigrants, they worked really hard. And when I looked at both of them, um, they both were affected by overworking, not taking care of themselves. And, um, you know, this kind of became a part of my mission. I really want to help people never get there with what I know. So, um, you know, initially I actually wanted to work with more of the vulnerable kind of like, um, population, um, like around suicide or mental health. And then um, I kind of realized like what I really am passionate about is helping people never get there. I think there's a lot of, you know, uh, people who do an amazing job in therapy and clinical psychology as well. And the one I really thought about what I'm passionate about, it's about creating and, you know, offering the tools so that people have the tools to never even get to that point. It's almost like if there's like a timeline of like extreme extreme consequences like I want to catch them early and then like pop them into a different world different direction 
So um, this is the foundation of my mission as well as my um, coaching business. So I help burnt out, stressed out entrepreneurs um, and help them really get back into flow and get them connected to their purpose and fulfillment as well as um, create abundance from that space. So um, yeah, and and that's kind of been you know part of my mission. And though the over the umbrella mission though is something bigger. So when I really envision a world where my gifts are being shared abundantly and I am helping a lot of people, um, what I see for the world is that humanity gets to live with love. And for me, love stands for laughter, oneness, vulnerability, and ease. Like I just feel like that really captures the essence of what I want to see in the world. Um, on top of that, um, I'm really passionate about elevating the consciousness of you know, this collective and um, and I think that is all tied together. Um, so yeah, I hope that answered your question. Now it, it was spot on and you know, I know it's a little off topic because we're talking about entrepreneurs finding balance, but you showed the book, Creating Your Own Happiness. Is that possible today from your view of the world? You wrote the book. So take a moment and tell us what's the mission of the book, who the book is for and can you give us one idea out of the book? No way, ladies and gentlemen, she's going to tell you how you get the book. She wasn't planning on doing this, I, I'm telling you. But, you know, when I start creating your own happiness, it just resonated with entrepreneurs finding balance. Because once you find yes. balance, it's kind of like, well, what's the next level? Next level is there's mm -hmm. got to be this happiness. So two part, three part question. She can handle it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> number one, why did you write uh -huh. the book? Uh, number yes. two, who is the book for? And mm -hmm. number three, what's one golden nugget out of the book that you can share? So. You know, then you can tell us how to get it. Okay, I may have to ask you to repeat the questions. There's a lot of questions at once, but um, so number one question was, who is the book for? Yes. Okay. And then, so, why did you uh, write the book? Okay. Yes, I think they kind of go together. So, why did I write the book? Um, you know, when I sat down, and well, first of all, let me go a little bit back. I always knew that I wanted to write something, but I also had a huge like imposter syndrome about it for a long time. And this was a dream that was like really, really scary for me to even admit for a while. And actually the first time I was in Bali, I was here with um, Greatness Foundation um, business retreat at this time. And I was in a mastermind and they asked me, what's a dream that you've never shared with anyone because you were too scared to even speak about? And at that time, the scariest thing for me was to write a book. So I like somehow like got it out of my throat. I was able to say it. Um, it was really scary. And though like that activated something, you know, once I was able to like put that out there, um, I remember coming back from Bali, I hired a book coach right away and I actually did write this book in 90 days. But, um, you know, um, so several layers to that answer actually. One is I did have a vision I had very specific vision of who this book is gonna be for. I remember I was meditating one day and it was like this person who's like, boom, you know, partying at this club and all of a sudden he's, he or she is drunk and they like have this like moment of like, what am I doing here? Like, am I happy? Like, what's going on? You know, they have this like moment of kind of, you know, um, getting back to themselves and realizing they've kind of, come a little bit farther away from who they really are. Another um, vision I had is somebody who just like, you know, um, suffering from different kinds of like manifestations of stress or um, lack of, you know, self-worth and they're potentially like, you know, um, you know, suffering from like an eating disorder um, or somebody who is at their job and they're just unhappy and they're like, why am I here again? And you know, mind you, these are all pieces of my own story from my past. So these visions I think were a part of me, but also I did see specific people that weren't me in this meditation where I genuinely want to help those people. So I did write that. And though, I don't know if this kind of stuff has ever happened to you, but once I wrote the book, which I wrote in 90 days, I realized, um, this book was really for me. It was like almost my future self writing this book. I mean, you know, it's not like a fiction book. It's kind of a book that's really, really deeply intertwined with my life philosophy. And that's kind of a big statement to put out there. And once I actually wrote the book and I put it out there, 
I didn't really know if I was 100% in integrity with all the things I talked about. Like, yeah, I think 70, 80% of me would say, like I embody those things at the time. This was like seven years ago or six years ago, but I wasn't sure. And then I was like, well, where is the gap? What is the gap I get to close? even more before I feel really good about putting this book out there. It took me, I think, two or three years to put this book actually out there. Um, so yeah, the first question is, it's all those people that I wanna help. Um, second question is, I mean, second answer to your question is, um, I think it was also myself. And then actually there's a third layer to this question. Uh, I know you didn't think this was a long question, um, but, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I actually think I also wrote it for my parents. Um, you know, I had this moment during COVID. I was um, with my mom and um, yeah, for the first time in her life, she decided to go to therapy. And this was so beautiful for me because I think there's a lot of stigma, especially culturally. And I think certain generations, um, it, a lot of blockages for her to want to seek therapy. And I think, thankfully, um, you know, our generation and kind of, you know, a lot of people nowadays are starting to really normalize things like therapy and coaching, which I love. Um, and for me, when she told me that, I had this like realization. I'm like, oh, part of me wrote this book for them because, you know, genuinely I was inspired on this path. Um, and a lot of those stories are infused with the stories of my parents. So yeah, those are my question or my answers to one of your questions. And hey, that's the most important question now. They want to know how can they get the book. They want to know where and how can they get the book. I mean, I know you weren't coming on here for that, but it's coming down the home stretch. Um, a two part question. Number one, how can I get the book? Sure. And number, and number two, what type of clients do you work with these days? You mentioned at the very beginning, but you did such a great job explaining your who, what, and when, where, and how. I didn't want to interrupt you. But if someone, if you're listening right now, I'm asking two questions. First, how can you get the book? Because she's she didn't know she was going to do that. So I want her to serve. And then number two, I want her to tell us the type of client she's working with. Yeah. Um, so you can go to creatingyourownhappiness.com and then um, that'll link you to the Amazon um, link so that you can purchase it there. And um, yeah, the type of people that I'm you know, working with nowadays is um, anyone who is moving through any kind of transition, um, either in their life or business, like switching industries or businesses or um, in these kind of transitions and or um, a CEO or a leader who yeah, who is doing pretty well. Um, everything looks fine from the outside and though um, they feel like something's missing, it's hard to pinpoint for them exactly what's going on, however they feel burnt out or disconnected and they kind of have this like gut feeling like this isn't gonna be good if I don't do something about it, but they don't exactly know what it is that you know they need. And oftentimes it is um, kind of those un um, unidentifiable things such as like your emotions or even you know connecting to something bigger like spirituality so those are some of the things that really help my clients move forward um, I work with also like money mindset so how to actually expand your abundance mindset which can also impact like the direct results of what they're creating and yeah I mean overall um, those are the type of people that I work with and and good people, you know, I love working good with people. good people. I love it. And now how can they connect with you? Like if they're listening right now and you may, they may know someone, I'm not saying it's the person watching, but it could be. So maybe it's you or someone, you know, or a family member. You're like, whoa, what's the best way to connect with Yuri? If I want to at least, you know, start a conversation or, or, or get her information, how can they best connect with you? Sure. Um, you can reach out to me, Yuri at YuriChoyCoaching.com, or you can reach out to me on Instagram at Yuri1C. So either um, is good. Um, I'm also connected on Facebook, which I'm sure I can um, include the link. So um, yeah, any of those would work. And or you can go to CreatingYourOwnHappiness.com, as I mentioned, to find the book as well. I love it. I love it. I love it. So we come down the home stretch. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you so much. I know four years ago, you graced us with your presence. You're, you're up. Uh, I know it's a 12 hour difference. So what, no matter what time you're watching this anywhere in the world, just know whatever time it is for us, 11 PM right now, it's 11 early or if we're here early, she's early and we're late. She's late, but she's here. I'm just curious. And this is the second to the final question, but I'm curious. 
you know, what do you enjoy most about what you're doing right now? And as you were speaking, I could hear the joy in your voice. You could see the happiness in your eyes. And I'm like, man, she does, she would do this for free. So I'm just curious, <laughs> what do you enjoy so much about what you do? What do you enjoy about it? Yeah, I mean, I just get so lit up when I get to see people create new possibilities. You know, when I think about an abundant world, um, abundant transformational relationships um, that we get to have, it really just comes down to creating win-wins. And when people really get that and I help them really see that, it's so fun and creating new possibilities. So as long as we can create new possibilities and create win-wins everywhere we go, I mean, life is so fun, you know, and we're never going to feel stuck because we can continue to create different possibilities. And I think that's really what I get really passionate about is when I can see people really reclaim their their identity as the creator that they are, creator of their life, creator of their emotions, creator of their reality, their businesses, and like really connect to that. And um, in the, you know, and along with really, um, you know, getting connected to their purpose on the way. I think all of those kind of mixed in together, like I just see people get to really, you know, amplify their impact in a way that they never thought was possible or create new businesses and really follow their heart and also live a life that gets to feel really abundant. I just get so excited. I just get so excited to see this. And I think, um, you know, I've been very lucky that I've been able to attract like really, really amazing clients who I genuinely just like love. Like I would hang out with them anyway. <laughs> and I get to work with them. Like what a blessing. So yeah. Um, so thank you for seeing that in me. And I do genuinely feel very, very grateful. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you being here on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. Uh, last question as we uh, close out, by the way. Number one, uh, first, let me say thank you. So thank you so much. We appreciate you, thank by the you way. Thank you so much. It's so great <laughs> to be And for the person here. that's watching right now, if you had to, to share your final words to encourage or inspire them, I mean, they're watching now, maybe go back and watch the replay. There's someone right now, maybe listening to the podcast, we're in your ear. So thank you so much for allowing us to be in your ear. So maybe we're watching you on your screen or a tablet or phone. Um, but if you had to share just one or two, a couple words of encouragement, what would you say to the person that's watching right now? And again, thank you so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. We appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Um, I would say, you know, life is so much more than just work. Enjoy it. Maybe slow down once in a while. Um, you know, connect with people that you love. Enjoy every moment that is available to you. And yeah, just knowing that we're just really um, these creatures on a giant planet um, in a giant you know, Milky Way, and there's lots of different universes out there. And um, yeah, just to put things into perspective so that you can really find joy in all the ordinary or small things, which are very extraordinary when we look at it from different perspective. Yeah. Wow. Makes a lot of sense. Thanks so much. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. It's been an honor being here. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you to viewers. Thank you for watching, by the way, because without you, there is no show. So we appreciate every comment. We appreciate every like. And yeah, it's cool. We hit the like button. But what's really special, is we hit that share button. You pay this message forward to a community of folks who their life will be better as a result of this conversation. And I never get tired of reminding you every night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time that you're amazing. I got it. You're incredible. Yes, you're one of a kind. But more importantly, that today is your January 1st. And because of just that one reason alone, I believe your best is still yet to come. They ain't seen it yet. Your best is yet to come. Your best yet to come. With that being said, my name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. We'll make some good things how we connect again next time. Peace. We out. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.